pirmas manas švedijos negalėjo atvykti dėl ligos. Ir tas naudojant Skype'o, matysime, kad jau pranešėme taip pat. Okay. Yes. Uh, you will do play without pitch. Sweden, and I'm happy to be with you. Uh, due to health travel restrictions, I cannot also not, not be with you, but I'm with you in my thoughts. Uh, can you put slide one up, please? Yes, it's on the screen. Okay. So, um, my name is Dr. Johan Svahn, and I work as a director of the Swedish NGO Office for Nuclear Waste Review, MKG. And I've been asked present some considerations on the management of nuclear waste in Sweden and the implications for nuclear power new build plans. And I thank the organizers for, of this conference for this opportunity. Uh, slide two, please. The Swedish NGO Office for Nuclear Waste Review, MKD, is an environmental organization created by the largest Swedish environmental NGO, the Swedish Society for Nature Conservation to work specifically with nuclear waste issues. And MKG receives funding from the Swedish Nuclear Waste Fund. This funding allows the organization to participate in the review of the process of the license application for a proposed Swedish repository for spent nuclear fuel near the Forsmark nuclear power plant in Sweden. The Swedish nuclear industry via their special company SKB, created to be responsible for waste management, applied this year on March 16th for a permit to construct a repository for spare nuclear fuel. This is after a development and siting process of over 30 years. The repository is proposed to be sited adjacent to the, new, to the Forsmark nuclear power plant on the Baltic coast some 100 kilometers north of, Sweden, of Stockholm. During the consultation process that has taken place before the application, a number of serious issues have been raised. Some of these are quite great, of quite great concern when considering the long-term environmental safety of the Swedish project. All the issues addressed will be, uh, will be addressed in the ongoing license review process where MKD and the Swedish Society for Nature Conservation will strongly argue in opposition to a permit. Next slide, please. The Swedish case shows that even with high ambitions, the management and final disposal of nuclear waste from nuclear power is highly problematic and involves high costs. Costs for the decommissioning of nuclear reactors are also high. All new build plans for nuclear power, especially in countries without previous nuclear experience, inevitably underestimate and ignore the problems and costs of nuclear waste and decommissioning. The reason for this is that if these issues were considered with, serious, with a seriousness necessary, 
Decisions for nuclear new build would be very difficult, considering the environmentally alternatives available. To bring forth these problems to decision makers is therefore vital. Slide four, please. It is a big challenge to find a way of managing the most long-lived and dangerous waste from the production of electricity from nuclear power. Uh, the spent fuel, the waste is hardly radioactive and has therefore to be isolated from man and the environment for hundreds of thousands of years. If the nuclear waste is the direct disposal of spent fuel, plutonium remains in the waste and is possible to use for production of nuclear fuel devices. As the most important plutonium isotope has a half-life of 24,000 years, the nuclear proliferation risks and the need for surveillance and safeguards also exists for a lifespan of over 100,000 years. And finally, the repository will be a chemical risk for all future time, as it will contain heavy metals and other elements that are chemically hazardous. Slide 5, please. According to the Swedish Nuclear Act, uh, that's a that law controlling nuclear power in Sweden, the nuclear industry is responsible for the management of the Swedish nuclear waste. They have to find a sustainable method for finding disposal of the nuclear waste that meets stringent criteria for long-term safety as set by the regulator. An economic system has been set up to guarantee that the polluter pays principle is upheld for every kilowatt hour of nuclear electricity produced, the nuclear electricity production companies have to pay a fee to the Swedish Nuclear Waste Fund. The Swedish regulator is now considering the fund underfinanced, uh, it's not, there's not enough money in the, in the fund, and it wants to raise the, the fee to three times the present level. The nuclear industry has set up a special company and give if the task to meet the requirements of the Nuclear Act, this company is called the Swedish Nuclear Fuel and Waste Management Company, SKB. In Sweden, the stamp nuclear fuel is directly disposed of in a depository, that is the plan. Early plans for reprocessing spent fuel were abandoned already in the early 1980s. Reprocessing was already then seen as non-economic, environmentally dangerous, and at risk nuclear proliferation, a view that is even more evident today. The nuclear waste company SAP has been working over 30 years on developing a method for the repository and finding a site for the disposal of Swedish spent nuclear fuel. The method they have called, uh, they have developed is called the KBS method. Uh, if this it's still also this method that the Finnish repository planners now want to use. It's important to understand that the Finland relies entirely on the safety analysis developed in Sweden and cannot proceed with their repository work if the Swedish repository is not given a final go-ahead uh, in licensing application review that is, that is ongoing. I will come back to discuss the KPS method for repository for final disposal and the environmental concerns about the method that will have to be dealt with in the licensing process. But first, I want to give a brief overview of the Swedish system for management of nuclear waste. Slide six, please. Uh, for the Swedish low-level nuclear operational waste produced in the nuclear power plants, as well as waste from hospitals and industry, a repository for low-level waste for the SFR has been built near the Forsmark nuclear power plant. It's the same site as the plan for the spent fuel repository. Much of the transportation is done with a little chip called Siegen. The transport system and repository uh, has been expensive, has to be now also expanded when the uh, nuclear reactors are being decommissioned. Slide 7, please. The repository in SFR is situated 50 meters under the Baltic Sea, and the safety case for the repository has to be proven for a tight span of 10,000 years, 10, years. The waste canisters are placed in tunnels or in a central silo. The repository is, pla is presently planning for expansion, the blue part in the picture, to allow for disposal 
of combustible waste from the dismantling of the phased out Swedish nuclear reactors. Slide 8, please. The spent nuclear fuel from Swedish nuclear power plants is similarly shipped to a central interim storage facility called Club near the Oskarshamn nuclear power plant on the south coast of Sweden. Next slide, please. The club facility is placed 75 meters on down the bed. There are two there are spent fuel pools, and the spent fuel is stored in two large pools. All the spent fuel from the operating lights of the Swedish reactors operate in this facility. Next slide, please. The Swedish nuclear waste company, SKB, is now planning to go ahead with the next step for the management of Swedish spent nuclear fuel. The company has made an application um, to construct a fund repository for spent nuclear fuel. The license will also be for an encapsulation plant to put the fuel rods in copper canisters. The copper canisters are for safety case. I think a sound in the background. Okay, maybe if I switch off my um, my speakers here, I'll just take down my volume a little. Okay. Um, so we are on slide 10. 10. 11? 10. Okay, slide 11. The Swedish project to find the method and site for a repository for high level nuclear waste dates back to the 1970s. Thus, already over 30 years ago, the so-called KBS method uh, was developed. The present version of the KBS method, KBS-3, came in 1983, and is the orange report in the slide. There were three, three different reports, so the KBS-3 is the latest one. The basic idea behind the KBS method is to construct a genetic repository about 500 meters down in the Swedish bedrock. At this depth, tunnels are estimated and spent fuel is put in holes in the floor of the tunnel. <coughs> the fundamental safety system of the KBS method are the artificial barriers of copper and clay that enclose the spent fuel down in the repository. The copper canister is the most important barrier and the idea is the canister will only be very slightly affected by corrosion for over 100,000 years. The clay barriers have as a function of preventing groundwater from reaching the copper. An observant listener will also, of course, see that the finished project for repository described in the previous presentation is a copy of the Swedish project. Uh, I would like to repeat that the Finnish repository project for spent fuel is entirely dependent on the approval of the Swedish project in the coming license review. Before conclude, uh, next slide, please. Well. Before concluding with a discussion of the environmental issues that will be raised in the last sense review, a few words about site. After a long history of site in years, the nuclear waste company has, since the turn of the century, been carrying out site investigations at two sites, both adjacent to a nuclear power plant. That's Oskarsham, where also Clap is situated, the, 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 the uh, storage site, and the Foschmark, a nuclear power plant, but also SFR is situated. In June 2009, the Forschmark nuclear power plant site was chosen by the nuclear waste company SKB for a repository with an encapsulation plant to be built at Ostersham. Slide 30, please. Uh, so the application has been handed in on the, the nuclear waste company handed in an application for a repository on March 16, 2011, this year. And the application was submitted to the, to the regulator, the Swedish Nuclear Safety Authority, according to the Nuclear Act, and to the Environmental Court, according to the Environmental Act. So it's dealt with, with both by the regulator and the court. The license application will give the regulator the legal ground to act fully on the issues of concern that it has, including the possibility to demand to see all the results from copper corrosion research carried out by SKD, some of which now is being withheld by company. 
Until 2013, the regulator and the court will decide what supplementary information is necessary before the final review can start. So it will take two years until uh, we have come forward to see that information is available. And because of problems, the repository must work to make it necessary before a final review can start. The company SKB has to uh, make all the supplementary information available before a review will start. And after the final review is ready, that is maybe many years in the future, the court will give recommendations and the regulator also to the government. Uh, and in Sweden, it's the government that finds the site if the permit is to be given or not. And as I said, such a decision is far away. Slide 14, please. There are a number of environmental concerns that will have to be handled in the licensing review process. A final repository for spent nuclear fuel cannot be allowed to its harmful radioactivity for a period of over 100,000 years. A geological repository in Sweden, the Swedish bedrock, at 500 meters has corrosive groundwater flowing through the repository. And therefore, using the KBS method, it has to rely on man-made barriers of clay and copper to isolate the away from the environment. And the chemical and biological environment will in the long term threaten the artificial barriers of copper and clay in ways which are difficult to foresee. <coughs> KBS is basically a model and whether the model is complete enough is not how is, is how hotly debated. Perhaps more, most importantly here, there has been much discussion in Sweden internationally over the last few years concerning the fundamental SKB understanding that copper is essential, essentially inert to corrosion in the repository environment. The controversy remains unsolved, but copper corrosion research results point major problems. Slide 15, please. Uh, in Sweden, it is expected that there will be several ice ages during the next 100,000 years. Glaciation will lead to extreme variations in the chemical and biological environment in ways that will affect the man-made barriers of copper and clay. Glaciation during all use ice ages will also physically affect the repository with lateral movement, major earthquakes and permafrost. The uncertainty of a long-term physical and chemical and bio bio biochemical impact of the repository means there are a number of unanswered questions in the safety analysis. It is also important not to forget that spent nuclear fuel contains plutonium that poses a long-term nuclear weapons proliferation risk for over 100,000 years. This will mean that there will be monitoring and surveillance demands for the extended future. This also has to be discussed in the licensing review. Slide 16. Uh, the regulator, Swedish Radiation and Safety Authority and the Environmental Court will have to deal with a number of important issues as they review the forthcoming the, 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 the uh, license application that has been handed in. First, there are basic legal issues such as if the consultation process has been properly carried out or if the environmental impact statement conforms to legal standards. Then there is the issue of whether the complex model for long term safety analysis will pull up scrutiny. The model has to show long-term safety for hundreds of thousands of years. As our Isaac scenarios covered in the way, for example, regarding permafrost or earthquakes, or scenarios for future release radioactivity and impact on the biosphere covered in the appropriate way, and can SKB show that the clay will not erode too fast during glaciation? Slide 70, please. There are there then the issue of whether the input data to the model can be verified or at least made plausible. This concerns foremost happens in the repository for the first thousand years. It's important to understand that there is an extremely weak experimental support for the fundamental idea that it does not corrode in the repository environment. The problem will be worse in the beginning when the, hot, when the spent fuel is hot. During this period, it is also questioned when the clay will swell and behave predictive, which is also which is a necessity. As stated previously, SKB has major problems with results uh, of copper research and clay research in the repository environment. With the copper corrode very fast during the first during the hot first half years of 
and so there's some research claim. There are researchers that claim it, the, that the dinosaurs can break or within 500 years. Other licensing reasons relate to intrusion scenarios, risk for agility, and the need for long term information transfer to the future. The risks for unintentional or intentional intrusion have to be balanced with the positive aspects of disability. The nuclear weapons proliferation risk with plutonium and the resulting need for long term monitoring will have to be considered. Slide 70, please. Even though the exact development during the licensing process is are very difficult to predict, it is certainly possible, some say even likely, that major problems for the Swedish nuclear waste company SKB will appear in the review process. The licensing of the KBS method in Sweden is certainly not a certainty. The Swedish case shows that even with a system of high ambitions, the possibility to solve the nuclear waste problem is highly uncertain. Costs for taking care of low level waste for internal storage of spent fuel and for the commissioning of nuclear reactors are, are very high. All new build plans for nuclear power, especially in countries without previous nuclear experience, and I've said this before, inevitably underestimate and ignore the problems and costs of nuclear waste and decommissioning. The reason for this is that if these issues were treated with the seriousness necessary, Decisions for nuclear new build would be very difficult, considering the environmentally better alternatives available. To bring forth these problems to decision makers, as I said before, is therefore vital. I think this conference can help in this regard. Uh, last slide, please. Uh, for those interested in more information, the website of the Swedish NGO Office for Nuclear Waste Review uh, is mkdg.se. There is also there available brochure in English. And uh, slide 20. With this, I end my presentation. I thank you very much for your attention.